from your professional point of view, how concerned are you? There's definitely cause for concern. The big challenge for humanity is that we've never seen this virus before. There's no immunity in the human population. And therefore, uh, with the infection rate that this virus has, it will basically cross across the human population. I think it's going to be impossible to stop the infection rate. It will become a pandemic. And the challenge for governance is to keep the infection rate low enough that we can always manage the patients that need to be hospitalized. The virus seems to have a, prepon, a, a preference to uh, cause bad symptoms in older people. People already have other conditions and uh, a fair fraction of these need to be hospitalized. Mm -hmm. And the risk is that we get too many of these at the same time so that hospitals cannot take care, proper care of these patients. Mm -hmm. And what happens when it does become a pandemic? I mean, what does that actually mean? It means that the virus will be spread across the globe and likely will stay with us for the foreseeable future. Uh, the flu would be an example of a virus that has been with us for a long time and stays with us. Uh, it's likely that we'll see basically a wave of infection, perhaps seasonal like the flu. Uh, it is likely that uh, we will develop uh, vaccines that will help us minimize mm -hmm. and reduce the infection rates. Um, so long term, I'm quite optimistic that we'll be able to challenge, uh, master this challenge without any problem. It's the short term where really the risks are right now. Uh, and how do you avoid the short term risk? I mean, when I met you, you shook my hand. You're not nervous of doing that. So I'll go and wash my hands afterwards. Um, uh, washing your hands regularly, trying to sort of keep a certain distance is, uh, is important. Um, I think young people also will tend to have much uh, simpler system, uh, symptoms, mm -hmm. uh, weaker sim uh, symptoms. Um, and why is that? Because there's not many children. Physicians are not quite sure yet. So kids do get infected. They probably become contagious. Um, but uh, part of their physiology. So again, old people tend to already have conditions. Uh, you might already have some lung problems, some heart conditions. And, and so having a, this additional stress of having mm -hmm. a fever, having a cough, uh, ha having uh, this immune system active and trying to defend yourself uh, causes initial stress, which for some people will uh, cause them to then become so sick that they need to be hospitalized. What about mask wearing, for example? I think masks, particularly given that there's a, a paucity of them right now, should be reserved for medical personnel in the hospitals. I think for normal individuals like you and me, social distancing, as we call it, keep distance, try not to be a, in a room with lots of people for a long period of time. Uh, again, uh, stay clean, um, particularly if you start having symptoms, try not to be in close proximity to other people, to not to infect them. Uh, these are general good rules, uh, coronavirus or flu or other diseases. So I think these are things one can do to reduce the spread. Again, it will be impossible to completely avoid any risks unless you're a hermit and you live on the top of a mountain somewhere. Uh, but within society, you can reduce the risk to a uh, level that is reasonable for people in our age group. If you're in an uh, old people's home, then I think additional precautions would be appropriate. So how do you feel now being in Switzerland, where we seem to be now kind of at the, the frontier of the spread of this virus? What do you think is going to happen next here? Do you think that perhaps there are more cases than we really know about in Switzerland? That will in the future definitely be the case. The government has decided that they will only test people with, uh, who are at risk or have strong symptoms. So young people who might have weak symptoms will simply be asked to stay at home to minimize contagion. And again, I think the government has decided it will be impossible to completely dam it in. So now we need to manage it. Okay. The Swiss government, uh, in my opinion, has been uh, handling the situation quite well. Uh, the Swiss population has been handling the situation quite well. We're not in panic. We take it with a, a certain relaxed attitude, a certain uh, uh, normalcy, which I think is also very appropriate and, and very healthy. Do you think that closing the borders between Italy and Switzerland would be beneficial at all? You always have to weigh the, the, the economic impacts, the social impacts uh, versus the health impacts. At this point, we have so many cases within Switzerland that uh, the virus is here. Mm -hmm. We cannot prevent its import anymore in the sense that it's already here. Uh, again, uh, you might need to take precautions to keep the infection rate low enough. Um, I think closing the border, uh, again, is a political decision, I think, from the medical point of view right now, it's not indicated. And from an economic point of view, I mean, that is It would be the... very 
very difficult. You also need to think that a fair fraction of the medical personnel working in the Ticino actually comes from Italy. You close the border and suddenly your own hospitals are in big trouble. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.